What is up guys? Welcome back to another live in the OU tier. Today I'm bringing something a little bit different. We've used a team similar in the past, but today I made my own. Uh, it's a Trick Room team, uh, and it utilizes Trick Room setters such as Cresselia, uh, Cafagragus, and uh, Carbink uh, to do what it does best. I don't really want to go over the team. I'm going to let you guys see in an action. We're still on the suspect test ladder. I didn't make requirements, unfortunately, but I'm still playing on here because... Oh, great. Okay, so we, we get stall immediately. <laughs> this is fun. Um, good news is that he doesn't have any Alolan Marowak switch-ins, so that's fun. As you guys can see, we're rocking uh, Wisp, Shadow Bone, Fire Punch, and B Bone Meringue. I packed Lightning Rod just for Coco, but I haven't seen a Coco since I started using this team, which is really weird. But anyway, uh, good news is that he can't burn Marowak with Sableye. Bad news is that he's going to destroy uh, Marowak with Sableye, so... Uh, 50-50 right there. Don't really want to take a knockoff. Um, Carbink doesn't exactly get up hazards because of the Sableye. Uh, Cafagragus is an option. I get rid of his ability. Which isn't bad. Um, I'm gonna lead Whack regardless. Hopefully he doesn't lead off with Dugtrio. Uh, cause my best lead... Okay, he does lead Dugtrio. Amazing. Alright. Uh, this does mean that we are gonna get up our hazards though. Uh, even though he can get rid of them. I'm gonna go for a Bone Meringue right here, as he goes for Pursuit, actually. I'm not sure why, because I can't switch out. Uh, so I'm gonna knock out the Doug Trio immediately, which is amazing for me. Uh, he's gonna go into Sableye, Stall Eye, nice. Um, Shadow Bone is stronger. Now, um, the question is, do I want to switch out into Cafagrius, take a knockoff, make him lose his ability, and then switch into Carbink? And I don't think I do, I think I'd rather get off damage on this. Uh, as soon as possible. We do do 55 to it. He does go for the knockoff, getting rid of our thick club, uh, which is not going to allow us to knock him out on the following hit, but I do have a chance it's at the uh, defense drops, so I'm going to go for it, and uh, if we don't get them, we don't get them. Uh, we're going to do a lot less with Shadowbone now, like half, like 27%, so it's kind of bad. At the same time, his Tangrowth... Actually, I should probably keep this. Um... And do what? Switch out into Conk, Carbink, Zygarde. Zygarde's not bad, but I, I will go for Shadowbone. Uh, I do get a crit. Uh, I do not get a defense drop, but I do. I did get a crit, so that kind of makes up for it. Uh, gonna go for a, another Shadowbone. He's gonna go for another Recover. Eventually, he's just gonna knock me off when he gets back up to full, which is right now. Uh, and I don't mind that, honestly. As uh, I can just go for another Shadowbone. I don't mind losing my Marowak so much. Uh, just because I have other answers for his uh, tank growth, and you guys will see them uh, later. But I do need to get rid of his Chansey. That's the big thing. Cafagragus can deal with his entire team as long as I get rid of Chansey. Um, I gotta watch out for Toxic from Quagsire, but that's about it. Now, Zygarde can come in here, uh, fire off a big earthquake, force him into tank growth, which would get me into my. What? Into my Cresselia. Um. All right, let's go Zygarde. I'm not enjoying the stall matchup. I wish I had uh, Mega Maw while still on this team. I swapped it up for Zygarde, but uh, let's go for... I could have Sub right here, so this could be very dangerous for him. I really just want to go for Outrage uh, because it does a ton to Tangrowth, uh, even if it is physically defensive. Let's see, Tangrowth. Okay, that's not how you spell Tangrowth, ladies and gentlemen. You guys can't see that, but uh, I just... Wow, okay. Um, plus one uh, Outrage, 42 to 50. So I do want to go for that right here, as he is going to swap in his Tangrowth. Uh, it does seem to be Assault Vest and not uh, Fizz Def, so that's great. Uh, I will be able to get off another Outrage right here. Uh, his only switch in is Skarmory at this point, and if he lets this go down, he loses to Bandit Thousand Arrows. So he can't do that. He has to go Skarm here, which is great, uh, as we will get off some damage on that. Uh, he is Rocky Helmet, so keep that in mind. Um, Konk does really well against him now that his Sableye is not in. So I do want to go straight into Conk, I think, right here, uh, and potentially fire off a Thunder Punch. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. He might be able to get up some hazards, but it's not a big deal. Gets up a Spike. I doubt he would want to lose this immediately. Uh, I kind of want to predict the Tangrowth coming in, but I will just go for Thunder Punch right here. Let's see what he does. I could also go for Drain Punch, which it means that he should not switch into his Tangrowth, in theory. We are a Life Orb Iron Fist, so we should be able to 2-hit KO the Mega Sableye. I'm running Rock Slide on this set, specifically for Volcarona and opposing Alola Whack, uh, because I don't want to touch Volcarona with anything, and uh, I also do not want to 
Um, well, Ololowak resists the rest of my moves being Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, and Drain Punch, so Rock Slide is on there specifically for that. Let's see what he does. Um, this uh, Skarmory, like uh, Stall Skarmory, I don't think typically carries Brave Bird. I think it ca uh, carries Counter. Uh, and if he counters me right now and leaves the Skarmory low, that's fine because then Zygarde gets to come back in and wreak havoc. So uh, he shouldn't do that. He might want to Roost as well just to test the waters, but I also wouldn't Roost. Um, he would get rid of his Flying Typing as a result of Roosting, and he is faster than me though. So I have to keep that in mind. Uh, Thunder Punch is going to do a lot regardless though. So that's what I'm going for. He's going to Roost. He's going to test the waters. I'm going to go for, uh, for a Thunder Punch. Uh, we are going to get off some damage. He is Rocky Helmet. We're going to take a lot of damage from that as well. Uh, but I will be free to, I think just, I want to Ice Punch here really badly, predicting the, ta the Tangrowth. Uh, but I think Drain Punch is just overall safe. As he does go for Brave Bird, he weakens me quite a bit, but he also weakens himself uh, to the point where he's in range of, um, he's in range of my Outrage. So he should lose now. Uh, granted, he does have the Quagsire, but I'm going to be able to Drain Punch right here. Um... He doesn't have an opportunity to heal this thing up, so Drain Punch will kill. And now the fun starts. So, uh, Zygarde's going to do a lot of damage to his team. We already know that. Uh, do I go into Kofag instead, though? No, I think I just go Zygarde. Because I have the Lunar Dance, right? So I can just go Zygarde and break his team now. I think that's the best play. Uh, even if he Toxic Zygarde, it's not a big deal. He doesn't have anything that takes two Outrages. So, that's going to be the play. He can only status Zygarde. That's the worst he can do to it. And the second he does, I'll go into Cresselia and I'll Lunar Dance it up, and then he has no more switch-ins. So, that's how we played Stall, guys. Uh, I don't understand his turn one play of Pursuiting my Marowak. I don't know if he thought that I was Shed Shell for some reason, but I would have definitely Earthquake there, no matter what. Like, you, ju you just click Earthquake, man. <laughs> there's there's no reason to click anything else. Um, yeah, he, he just has a hard time with Zygarde. Like, I, I'm going to calc this against Chansey right now. Chansey... Um, yeah, that's 55 to 65, so he would have to stall me out with, um, with soft boils and hope I hit myself in confusion. That's his only play. Uh, he is going to go into Sableye. I think Sableye is going to straight drop to this. Sableye, Mega, uh, Outrage. It's going to take 66 to 78, so I am just going to go for Outrage. He is going to protect. Uh, that doesn't make a difference. Uh, we do have a chance to knock him out here. Uh, it's not in our favor, but as long as we get off a lot of damage on this, it's no longer a threat. And, uh, like I said, I can just Healing Wish, uh, Healing Wish, I can just Lunar Dance my Zygarde back up, so it's all good. He does choose to go into Tangrowth, so that's gonna take 55%, and without a Rocky Helmet user anymore, he has no more switch-ins into this, so. Uh, and if I get a three-turn Outrage, then his, uh, Chansey dies, and if he wants to swap back into Tangrowth, then he's going to lose his only check to my ground attacks. So, he's going to go out into Quagsire here. He's going to take 76%, and I am going to get the three-turn Outrage, so that's fantastic, uh, as now he no longer has a switch in. So, he loses something right here, no matter what. And uh, I don't need to trick him against Stall because everything's inherently slow, and Zygarde's lowest base speed is 175, if you bring it down to minimum. Sorry to give you guys this, uh, this Stall game, Game 1 really sucks. I didn't want to have to play stall, uh, but I'm showing that this team can handle it. I will leave a link to the team in the uh, description down below if you want to check it out. I'll leave a pace bin. And uh, we are going to knock out the Quagsire, so that's fantastic. As now his Tangrowth is going to come back in, but it is still in range of Outrage, which I find interesting that he brought this in. Um, I mean, he can swap it back out if he wants to. Uh, how do I want to play this? I think, should I just hard switch into Cress? Because Cress just gets the Lunar Dance anyway. No, I'm going to go Kofagrigus first. He might want to knock me off. Uh, as he actually pulls out a double into his Chansey. So good play, uh, knowing that I could hit myself in confusion. However, uh, I can 1v1 this thing. And 2, um, well, I can't completely 1v1 it. If it has Toxic, it will beat me. Uh, how do I want to play this? Alright, I think we just go Carbink, and we go for the Explosion, get back into Zygarde, Outrage twice, and kill something else. Right? That would be the play. Yeah, let's go Carbink. He actually pulls a double into, into Sableye. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so this thing will be able to recover up against me because I don't have anything to hit it. Um, I'm okay with going Cresselia because his knockoff only does so much. 
And I have Moonblast for him, so I'll be able to weaken him gradually. And uh, the second that he goes into Chansey, that gives me a free switch out into my Zygarde again, so. And I think I can almost click Earthquake against this team. Uh, Tank Growth, how much are you at? Assault Vest versus Zygarde. Uh, Earthquake does... It does 23 to 26, so as long as I get the Tang Growth below 20 before it switches out, we're good to go. Uh, let's see, we are a Carbink. <laughs> we are a Fairy type, so he may want to switch out here. Uh, I am just going for the switch out into Cresselia. I'm going to see if he fears this. We'll see right now. But we have seen three of his moves, Protect, Recover, or Knock Off, pretty standard, and I think the last move is, of course, Will-O-Wisp. Uh, if he goes for a Knock Off right here, then great play. Uh, he gets rid of my Cress's item, but that's as much as he'll do. Uh, he won't do anything else. And then I can switch out into Zygarde. Uh, if he goes for repeated Will-O-Wisps, it's fine. I'll eventually go into Cofagoragus first, just to see, but... Um, Sableye is going to go for the Recover, so good play. Uh, I'm going to go for the Moonblast here, weaken him a little bit, do 29%. Uh, special attack drop doesn't really matter. He goes for the knockoff. That do also doesn't matter. Now the thing is I can easily switch into Zygarde here So he shouldn't in theory go for a recover. I'm just gonna moonblast again. He also shouldn't switch uh, Is my thought process there. So he is gonna go for a recover. Uh, he's down to 11. I will continue to moonblast and the thing is the second that he goes for uh, a knockoff against my Confagrigus, he loses his ability and either way, he's switching out into Chansey, so he just comes back and he has his ability. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit more complicated than I first expected. Uh, it's going to be a little bit tough. I need to get this Sableye back in range of Outrage. Um, he can just repeatedly spam uh, Knock Off against me, and it will still do a decent amount. It'll do like 25. So I'm going to have to be careful with that because I do still need the Lunar Dance intact. Uh, he might want to go Chansey here. I'm not sure. We'll see. Against Chansey, I think I always go Carbink. There is still a way for my opponent to win, but we'll see if he knows what it is. Um, this is going to be long, isn't it? All right, well, you know what, guys? Uh, as long as my opponent is taking forever to make a move, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pause, and then when we get back, um, something will have happened. So we'll be right back. All right, we're back, guys. I'm just calcing something real quick. Essentially, I got a Sableye down to 35, but as a result, I got my Zygarde burned. It's fine because I can still Lunar Dance. Uh, that's the key here, and that my Cresselia is not taking spike damage. But the thing is, I just have to see um, exactly how much my Zygarde does to this Tangrowth again. It does 54 to 64. So, if I go for a Lunar Dance now, is that my best play? Because if he crits me with knockoff, I straight lose. He just went for knockoff the last turn. If he crits me with knockoff, I just lose this game. So I think I do need to go for Lunar Dance now. As he is going to switch out into his Chansey, which is fantastic. His Tangrowth uh, was at 60. So I'm going to go into Zygarde. And uh, we are going to get this healed up. And now it comes down to, can I beat the Chansey? <laughs> I don't know if I can. Zygarde does 55 to 64 with Outrage, uh, unless I don't lock myself in Outrage and I just switch out, and then double back. That would be the play. Um, I am going to go Outrage, though. Let's see if he thinks this does a tremendous amount and just switches into his Tangrowth as a pivot, and then goes back into his Chansey. That would be, like, a godsend if he did that, because then I could actually just spam Earthquake against him. Uh, and Banded Earthquake does a ton. Okay, he takes 62. He goes for Soft Boiled. I need to break through Confusion a few times. Uh, that does 61. He goes for another Soft Boiled. Alright, so the good thing about Outrage is that I'm not wasting too much PP, and uh, Confusion is also nerfed. So, I have to keep going for this. Uh, we are doing over the amount that he has right now, so as long as we don't hit ourselves, which we're not doing, which is fantastic, uh, we should be able to win this right here. I am just going to keep going for Outrage, uh, and he's down to 2%, I just need to break through one more time. Come on, Zygarde. Come on. Uh, when did it get confused? Okay, the confusion just ended. Amazing. Chansey is dead. We are confused again, but now I can spam into Outrage and win. So all I need to do here is go into Cofagrigus, make him lose his ability, 
Uh, he does go for hidden power, actually. All right, uh, good good news. Uh, Cathagrigus can win on its own now, now that Chansey's dead. So we're gonna go for the Calm Mind here as he goes for another hidden power. Uh, if he goes for knockoff, that's fine. I'm gonna Trick Room here. As he goes for the knockoff, he loses his ability as a result. And now what I'm gonna do is, uh, I don't wanna pain split the, actually I don't mind pain splitting the, the Sableye because I'm also still lower than that. That's fine. I can just go for Shadow Ball now. Uh, that does knock it out, fantastic. And now we can pain split the Tangrowth and win. All right, cool, I came back at the right time then. I had to spam Outrage, that was my only play. It was really only to spam Outrage and hope that I never hit myself. Confusion nerf coming in clutch right there, honestly. Uh, and the fact that when you go for three Outrages, uh, if it's a three turn Outrage, it doesn't waste the PP. So I had way more Outrages than he had soft boils every day, all day. Um, I wouldn't have made that play of just continuously staying in. I think I would have uh, switched out into Tangrowth at some point, uh, but he chose not to, so that's fine. Uh, again, my opponent this time does not have switch-ins to Bandit Thousand Arrows, so we're going to try to set up for that. Uh, Greninja is a threat. It's always a threat. There's no way to avoid that being a threat. Uh, I'm just going to lead off with Carbink. Uh, the cool thing about Greninja is that it, if, if it is Protean, uh, it doesn't hit Carbink as hard. Scizor, however... Scizor can hit me hard. <laughs> I'm just going to go for Stealth Rocks here, actually, because he has no hazard removal outside of this Scizor. Uh, and he does go for Bullet Punch. And he doesn't Mega Evolve. He is Mega Pinsir. So he could be banded, uh, seeing by that damage. I'm actually going to calc that real quick. Carbink, uh, P Rock with Eyes. I have no HP invest. Uh, do I have HP investment? Yeah, I am max HP, actually. Uh, but I don't have any defense investment. How much does Scizor's Bullet Punch do if he's not banded? Scizor. Choice band, bullet punch, kills. So it's definitely not banded. Do I just spam rocks here is the question. I think I do. Yeah, I just spam rocks. Even if he goes for defog, he has less defogs than I have rocks. So he can do this all day. I'm keeping my rocks up no matter what. Yep, that's fine. I'm just waiting for you to attack me, bud. Oh, I hate that I have to upload games like this, man. It really sucks, uh, but I'm just going to keep spamming rocks. Uh, like I said, he, he has fewer. Uh, there we go. He finally kills me. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go out into uh, Marowak. We're an immediate threat to this. And I do just want to go for a... Uh, I think a Fire Punch is fine. Even though it's weaker than Shadow Bone and uh, Lando can take it, I will just go for Fire Punch. If he wants to Defog, that's fine. He's going to go out into Zygarde, actually. I have a, a pretty good response to this in Cresselia. Uh, he actually does not have leftovers, so I'm thinking that he's banded. So I, I'm pretty sure Crest can take a hit anyway, uh, as he does go for Thousand Arrows. That does a lot. Yep, Crest can definitely take two. Uh, I am going to get up my Trick Room right now, as he does choose to go out into a Scizor just to defog. Uh, he's very adamant on defogging, but now I get to switch out into my Whack, and now Shadow Bone two he KOs something. So uh, I'm I don't agree with him continuously defogging as much as it does save him uh, a lot of trouble with his pincer later on uh, he's going to lose a mon right here and it looks like it's going to be his scissor nope it's going to be something else makes the correct play of going for the u-turn however does zygarde eat this zygarde dragon dance versus marowak we're gonna find out right now uh thick club adamant uh, Shadowbone does 52 to 61. Um, I can still go for it here because my win condition is not this Marowak. It's Zygarde. So I am going to go for Shadowbone here. Uh, as he is going to go for the Thousand Arrows, that is fine. I am still in Trick Room. So what I think I want to do is go into my own Zygarde and start spamming Thousand Arrows. Because I have a response to his Pinsir. I'm not, I'm not in trouble against this Pinsir. Uh, I could also go Crest, but Crest gives a free switch into Scizor every time. Um, yeah, so we're going to go into Zygarde. Uh, we are also banded. We are in Trick Room, and we are going 4,000 arrows no matter what. We're going to knock something out. I don't know if he's going to want to keep this. E-Speed isn't really good against me. I still have two of my Trick Room setters, so I think I should be okay. Just go for 1,000 arrows right there. Uh, let's see what he brings out. He does bring out his Landorus to intimidate me. Uh, he's going to want to get up rocks, I assume. So I'm going to go into Crest, actually, as he is going to go for the Hidden Power Ice. Okay, so that worked out better than I expected. He is Life Orb, though, uh, but he can't hit me with ground moves. So I can just go for a, another Trick Room right here, 
as he is going to go out into his Greninja. Now, this is actually really good for me because he doesn't knock out Conkeldur with any one move. And uh, his Magearna coming in doesn't bother me either because uh, as soon as this goes down, Zygarde comes back in and starts rampaging. Now that I know that his uh, Lando is offensive, uh, I pretty much take advantage of it. So I am just going to go for the Drain Punch here. Uh, he is probably going to be able to knock me out with a, a Fairy move right here. He actually misses Floor Cannon. That sucks. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, we're still going to take advantage of it. We're going to go for another Drain Punch. Uh, we have one more turn of Trick Room left. We do end up with a kill. I kind of want to predict him pivoting into Lando off of Scizor um, as a safe play. I think that's exactly what he's going to do. I really want to Ice Punch right here. But at the same time, I feel like he doesn't need this. So, and he just wants damage off on me. So I think the best middle ground play is going to be Cafagragus. Because even if he U-turns, I'm fine. And if he bullet punches, he loses his technician ability. So now what I can do is I can go for another Trick Room on his U-turn. Uh, and no matter what he goes into, I have a decent response to. Again, my Conkeldur is uh, healthy. So I can switch it in on the Greninja. He would have to go for a Specs Hydro Pump and I think crit me, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, does he have to crit me? He does have to crit me. So... Uh, I can go either for a Thunder Punch here, or I can just play it safe, go for Drain Punch, uh, keep myself alive. I could also go for Ice Punch, uh, predicting his Lando, in which case I'm still under a few turns of Trick Room. I think I want to predict his Lando coming in. I'm going to go for Ice Punch. His Scizor comes in. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I went into Cofagrigus last time. So I'm going to go for a Drain Punch this time. He stays in, uh, but he loses his Scizor as a result. And the only thing faster than me is this Pinsir. Now, the thing about Pinsir is that when it goes for Quick Attack, it's going to lose its Aerial Aid ability <laughs> as soon as it touches my Cofagrigus, and now it can no longer touch me. So, you guys hear noise in the background, excuse me. My parents are insane. Uh, but I am going to go for another Trick Room right here, as he is going to switch out directly into his Greninja. I do not mind this at all, as now I can either sack off Cress, or I can actually go Zygarde after something goes down. Uh, I think it's going to be Conkeldur, because he still has the priority in the back. So, how much does Banded, uh, 1,000 arrows, I should really know these calcs off the top of my head, shouldn't I? Uh, how much does Banded, 1,000 arrows from Adamant, non-life orb, um, Zygarde due to Ash Greninja? Greninja, Ash, choice specs, 1,000 <clears throat> arrows, uh, does 97 to 115, so it's a roll in my favor. I could also go for Outrage, in retrospect. Um, as long as I have this alive. But I need this alive for his pincer. So I think I sack off Conk here. As he goes for the Dark Pulse, knocks me out. Uh, he is Protean. So he's not Ash Greninja. Uh, I didn't notice that before, actually. Yeah, he's not... Huh. Well, that makes a world of difference right now. Because I don't have to worry as much about this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna go Zygarde. Uh, his Lando is Life Orb, so I don't think it can take 2,000 arrows, so I'm just going to go for it here. His Pinsir is also neutral to the attack on the first turn, so I'm just going to try to 2-hit KO this Lando, which I do. And uh, I can no longer Oko the Greninja, but I can do a lot of damage to it. Now the problem is, I can knock me out with Ice Beam, and then I have no response to Dark Pulse. <laughs> so, that's a problem. Uh, so I think I need to crit him right here for in order for me to win uh, Because he does get off the ice beam Unless e speed does a lot. Uh, does ice beam even kill me if he's not life orb because he's not uh, Ice beam from protean. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let me switch over to protean grin uh, Spikes ice beam. Wow <laughs> Yeah, it actually does kill even a max HP variant. I believe so yeah, 124 to 147. So my only play is to crit. Uh, as we do not get it, he will go for the Dark Pulse. Oh, wait a minute. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> he doesn't have Ice Beam, guys. We're, we're okay. <laughs> we sack off Cress. Uh, we go back into Zygarde. We click E Speed. And uh, when he goes out into his Pinsir, uh, I will just switch out immediately. Actually, do I need to? Because uh, how much do I do to Pinsir? Mega Pinsir, E Speed, I do 37 to 44. That is not enough, unless I get rid of his Aerial 8 ability, in which case, uh, if I remove this, 
he's doing 30, and then a plus 2, he does 60. So, yeah, I'm gonna E-speed once, uh, and then he's gonna go for Swords Dance. He's going to attack my Cathagragus on the following turn, because he has to attack me right here, or else he dies to two E-speeds, uh, unless he's a really smart player. Uh, he does go for the return. He does knock me out, but he loses his aerial aid ability in the process, and then two E-speeds are gonna kill him. I could even go for Outrage right here. I do believe it kills uh, as it does, yes. So, we are gonna go for Outrage. Return is not gonna crit me, and Outrage is gonna pick up the kill on the pincer. So, that was a very methodically played game. I thought I was gonna lose to Greninja there at the end, but it turns out he didn't have Ice Beam, so that was a godsend. Uh, let's continue on, and uh, we will find one more game, I think, and we'll end it off there. It's a really cool Trick Room team. I built it really quickly, and I was like, okay, what works? Uh, Cresselia works. Uh, ooh, this is, an, this is a very interesting team. Very colorful. <laughs> I like the Hippot on a setup fodder for my, uh, for my Cathagragus. The only problem is the Hoopa. Uh, but the Hoopa is dealt with with Outrage. As soon as I get rid of his uh, Heat Ran and I weaken his Hippo, which Conk does really well. <laughs> Conk, like, does super well this game. It destroys my opponent's entire team. So I'm going to lead off with Carbink, as usual. He is going to lead off with Hippo. Uh, against this, I still do want to get up the Trick Room. But I don't think he's going to Earthquake on turn 1, so I'm going to go for Stealth Rocks, as now I'll be able to go for the Trick Room on this turn. Uh, I could even keep this as a Trick Room Setter, and just go Cresselia, or even Cofagrius, uh, and then just get off a Shadow Ball on something. That invites in his Hoopa, though. That's kind of scary. Um... Yeah, I'm going to keep this as a Trick Room Setter, because it actually does set up Trick Room on a few things, uh, such as Zapdos, the Tangrowth, uh, not that's that's about it. <laughs> that, that's all it sets up on uh, even even Hoopa though I uh, can set up on that So I'm gonna go into Cofagrius here This can get up the trick room too, so I'm not too concerned. He goes for earthquake. That is fine with me uh, I wish I had will-o'-wisp right now I'd be able to hit the uh, the hoop on the switch, but I'm actually just gonna go for pain split and then if he goes into Hoopa um, He does not though. He goes into Tangrowth instead which is really cool because the thing is, Tangrowth's only move to realistically hit me with is Knock Off. And as soon as it knocks off, it loses it loses its Regenerator ability, which will put it in range of Outrage when it comes back in on Rocks, which is really cool. Uh, I really like this one. It's so good. I could also switch into Marowak here, but I'm just going to go for the uh, Shadow Ball on this turn. He actually makes a nice play and goes for Giga Drain instead, as I'm going to get off a little bit of damage. He doesn't make physical contact with me, which is very smart. Uh, I'm going to go for the Trick Room now, as I will be able to Pain Split up on this. And if he wants to continue to Giga Drain me, he's going to leave himself very low. Uh, and now I can even Calm Mind. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go for the Calm Mind right here. As he goes for another Giga Drain, he does not crit me. And now Pain Split gets me back a ton of health, even on Hoopa. Uh, Hoopa has a decent HP stat, I believe. Uh, it's its physical defense that absolutely sucks. But a uh, cool thing about Hoopa is that it has to go for a dark move against me. He actually stays in uh, and goes for a no the knockoff, and this is exactly what I was talking about. Now he loses his regenerator ability, and now I can just fire off a Shadow Ball, and his Tangrowth comes back in at 28%, so this is really good. Now it comes back in at 12 so we are looking fine, guys. We are looking great. Uh, I'm actually going to... Do I save this? I don't think I need to. I die to rocks, right? Yeah, I'm at 12.5. So I do not need to save this. I will just go for another Shadow Ball. Uh, losing that actually is very bad for him because he no longer has switch-ins to uh, Banded Thousand Arrows uh, outside of maybe Hippo. But that gets worn down really quickly as well. Like, I'll, sh I'll tell you guys the calc in a second. Uh, Hippot on the standard mixed wall uh, with 80 defense. That's the UU spread uh, versus a Zygarde. Um, once again, I should really... Uh, get the correct set on this. <laughs> uh, Adamant, plus one. Thousand Arrows does 35 to 41, so it's only a switch in for so long. Now, uh, against this thing, I don't have a great countermeasure <laughs> to this, honestly. I did keep carbing specifically for this, but I do not need my Cofagrigus, and I want to see if he's special or physical. So I'm just going to go for a, a Shadow Ball. Uh, Hyperspace here, he doesn't make contact, so that's good to know. Uh, I, well, I already knew that, but, <laughs> um, right here I am gonna go Carbink. He probably doesn't have anything to touch me, so he's going to be forced out, which is exactly what I'm hoping will happen. Uh, I'm going for the Trick Room, I think. 
The problem is the remainder of my attackers are all physical. I probably should have kept my Cofagragus a little bit more healthy because it's the only thing that really deals with this hippo. Uh, lesson learned right there. But I am going to go for Trick Room here. As if he goes into hippo, it's fine. Uh, I can just switch out afterwards into either Griselia or anything of the sort. Uh, I did keep carving specifically for this Hoopa so that it couldn't get out of control. Uh, he is going to switch out into his Hippowdon. Good play. He doesn't have leftovers, so that's something to note. As soon as I get off damage on this thing, we're good to go. Uh, I'm going to go into Conkeldur here as he is going to go for the Earthquake. And I'm just going to go straight for Ice Punch. He's probably Rocky Helmet. Uh, in which case, we are probably... I mean, he has to slack off. No matter what, he has to slack off. That's the thing. Uh, is because if he lets me hit him with an Ice Punch and he leaves his Hippo at that range, he is going to die 2,000 arrows. That's that's the problem about Hippowdon. Um, typically, Hippowdon does not run max Fizz Death. Even if it did, uh, Conkeldur... Conkeldur... With the Choice Band, but Choice Band is Life Orb. And we have Ice Punch on this set. Ice Punch does uh, 45 to 53. So that would leave him, as you guys can see, 49%. Uh, he is going to get frozen. Ooh, that sucks, dude. Wow, I'm sorry. I can't say I'm sorry because that's against my religion. But <laughs> I, I do feel bad for my opponent. Uh, I'm just going to go for a Drain Punch right here, as it will get me back some health, as hopefully he doesn't thaw. We'll see in a sec. He does not, and that means his Hippo is dead, which means now the second I get up Trick Room, which might be difficult, but as soon as I get it up, um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be able to sweep him with Zygarde, essentially, because he doesn't have switch-ins. So I am just going to go for a... I'm going to go for a Rock Slide here. As I miss, uh, does he thaw? No. Uh, the sand is going to end, but I need to hit this rock slide. Uh, thank you. I didn't want to make contact with him because, well, I mean, that really didn't make much sense, but uh, the thing is, he can't set up with Manaphy in front of this. That's why I wanted to leave it in uh, because that thing is a threat. <laughs> and also, whatever comes in has to attack me, essentially. It has to attack me or else he loses a mon. So. That was the, uh, the theory there. Uh, what's my rank right now? Let's find that out because that's a a, a, a a very running tradition on this channel. Uh, 1439, I don't know where that is, but uh, I am just going to go for the Ice Punch right here. As he does go for the Discharge, uh, he is the standard Zapdos set that's ru been running around. Uh, but the Zapdos set actually does not touch Marowak. <laughs> and I can go into it right now if I wanted to. Uh, but I think the better play is the better play Carbink. No, the be I think the better play is Marowak because when his Hoopa comes back in after, it still has to kill something. And then Carbink gets up the Trick Room and something's going to be dead because of Marowak right now. So I'm going to go for the Shadow Bone. Something is dying. Like some something is dead. Uh, he's gonna go for the discharge. I am lightning rod, so that doesn't do anything. As his Zapdos takes a ton from that, and I can just repeatedly spam Shadow Bone. Uh, it does 58, uh, which what we just saw. So he can't reliably roost up on it. And I have Bone Meringue, so I don't think he would want to risk that. He actually chooses to defog. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess it takes certain things out of range, but at the same time, he just gave my Carbink a switch into his Hoopa which I'm feeling is choiced in some way at this point. Uh, if he goes Manaphy, I will click Shadow Bone because it'll put it in range of E-Speed. Uh, I will always click Shadow Bone here, no matter what. And uh, he does go for Tail Glow, fantastic. We are gonna get off a huge hit on this and now it is in range of E-Speed, so we should be good to go. Uh, I am going to not conserve this. Uh, I'm just gonna go for a Shadow Bone. And now he's in range of extreme speed, or at least he should be. Uh, it is banded extreme speed from Zygarde. And when he goes into Heat Ran after he sees that I lock myself into E speed, I can switch out into Cresselia, get off the Trick Room. Uh, I can Lunar Dance back into. Uh, he actually chooses to go into Hoopa. Doesn't Hoopa die? 
I'm pretty sure Hoopa dies. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Choice specs versus uh, Zygarde. Uh, I really need to get this set in here. Uh, wait, isn't this? Yeah, this is Choice Bandit. Fantastic. Um, e Speed. No, it doesn't die. It doesn't die. It does 60 to 70, guys. I lied. Uh, but I am going to go Carbink. And he's going to go for the Hyperspace Fury. It does not do enough. Not nearly. Uh, and this is going to tell me right here if he's choiced or not. As I go for the Trick Room. I could also get up Stealth Rocks. Uh, but Trick Room is better as he goes for a Hyperspace Fury. That is fine. And now my Trick Room is up. I go for the Explosion right here. And uh, then I go... Mm, do I have to explode? I think it's better if I explode regardless. Because I don't want to give his Hoopa a chance to come back in this game. I also don't know if the Heat Ren is like Shooka HP Ice. So uh, I don't want to take that chance. He is going to go out into his Heat Ren. That's fine. I get off the Explosion. It does 28%. <laughs> what? Why did that do so much? Huh? <laughs> Carbink has like no attack. All right, well, anyway, we can go for Thousand Arrows here. Knock out the Heat Ren. And uh, I'm not sure why I went for Thousand Arrows. I guess it's just a stunt because it's like the new best move in the game. Uh, Joey said it best in one of his most recent lives. He said uh, Zygarde might be the S tier Mon of this generation. Uh, I completely agree. I feel that once the big threats are removed from the tier, that Zygarde is going to run wild and that it might even be suspected at some point i don't think it would be banned but I'm, I'm like reading way too far into the future but that's gonna wrap it up for this one guys zygarde is gonna be on the thumbnail i think because it did put in a lot of work would put in the most work uh yeah i think it was zygarde honestly uh did a ton of work with the outrage in the first game and just always coming through with the e speed living the dark pulse obviously it, the greninja didn't have uh ice beam awesome zygarde cleaned up every game every game it just finished it off so that was really cool uh, actually, Cofagrius technically finished off the first game, but like I said, guys, if you want to check out the uh, the team, definitely check out the description down below. I'll leave a link to the paste bin where I'll leave the team. And uh, also, if you did enjoy this episode and you want to see more like this, make sure to leave a like down below. I know I don't upload a lot of lives, but I do try to get one in every once in a while, uh, just so you guys have something to watch and you get to listen to me and I uh, get to see my point of view on battles. I know a lot of you do enjoy my lives, so uh, it's honestly really flattering. Thank you guys so much for... Uh, for being here with me, my 626 subscribers that I never thought I would have in a year. Uh, that was incredible the way that everything worked. But uh, again, guys, if you are new to the channel, uh, make sure to subscribe. If you did, if you did enjoy, leave a like, uh, share, do whatever you want with the video, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao.